What's up, everybody? How are we doing tonight? Oh, where'd the picture go? Let me know if you guys can hear me. All right, I'm going to use the condenser mic just to save on batteries because I'm going to be right here the whole time designing. Where is that file? There it is right there. All right. Hey, Ryan, hey, Gunner. Oh, right, there it is. We got Pepsi, we got snacks. This is going to be a fusion night. So what we're doing tonight is uh, wife's birthday is coming up, and I figured I would make her something. We're from Pittsburgh, so I figured I would make her something Pittsburgh-related. And I'm going to take some cool designs that I found online, and I'm going to make them 3D printable. This is super easy, and I've done this in uh, other ways, other videos. I did the Nerf logo this way. Uh, I did Bumblebee, the logo for the BLV MGN Cube this way. And basically, I'm just going to bring in, I'm going to create a, a base plate, basically, for this. And then we're going to overlay the, the picture on it as a canvas. And we're basically going to trace it out. And this is something that anyone can do. It's so simple to do. And I highly recommend it if you're just learning Fusion 360 and you want to have a little bit of an idea of where to start or just a simple project to kind of get started with. So that is what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to switch over to here so you guys can see how it goes on. Well, Gunner, buying stuff takes time, and shipping takes forever right now, so why not make something? Um, so, again, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to kind of create a, a base for what I want this model to be, uh, like the size at least. So we're just going to create a sketch, and I want to do a rectangle. We're going to do one from, uh, I want a three point, I wanted a center point. Rectangle, center rectangle. So I'm thinking of doing uh, 300 by 200. I think that would be all right. Now I have a large format printer I can print this in, so it kind of makes it a little bit easier. And then we're just going to extrude this up uh, three millimeters for the base. So this is what we're going to start with uh, for this model. Now we'll go here and turn back that way. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and do insert. We're gonna do a canvas, insert from my computer, and uh, where was it at? Download, right there. And we're gonna put it right on that face. And then we're just gonna kind of scale it up until it fits about where I want it to fit at. I can always reduce the canvas size here a little bit my main uh, square there we're gonna do let's see here I guess we'll do that like that then we can just bring this down let's call this 170 see how that looks Let's bring this down here just a little bit more like that. So yeah, this is what we're going to start with here. And we're basically just going to be tracing this out uh, very simply. So we're just going to create a new sketch right on top of there. And we're going to go ahead and use just the standard line tool to do most of this. Now I will, you can do it. So we're basically going to do the outline. It's going to end up being easier that way. Um, we just kind of have to pick a few points where everything is going to go and then kind of just go out from there. I try to keep things straight. And then now we're going to go ahead and use an arc tool, three point arc. So from here. To there. Uh, 
That did not work out well. So, arc, here upon arc, from here to... No, not there. Jeez. It doesn't have to match it perfectly, which is kind of the, the cool thing about it. Because as long as it's close enough, it will end up looking fine once you go in three point three do it. <laughs> Aaron's on the wrong count again. Now, the one thing I'm not checking is the width of this. You see how that looks kind of funky there? So we're just going to end up moving this line out a little bit here. Try and make it a little bit. Because we can do the do some constraints here. So if we're going to go here, I want to, to here. No, I don't want to do that. I'll make sure these are parallel. And we're just going to call this 1.6 millimeters. Oh, that does funky things. So we need to set up our parallels first. There we go. We're just going to have to kind of mess with this a little bit till it looks about right. It kind of makes it a little bit wider that way. Uh, I did think about that, Ryan. So to put this on a, a Pennsylvania outline, that might be all right. We're going to start with this first and see how it goes. So the thing is, I just need to make sure everything here has equal distance around it. So that's the one that's going to be a little bit hard with the word here is trying to make sure that everything is equal. So uh, I don't know if I'd be able to find the font, especially in this the way it is because of how it blends into the skyline over here on the side. I don't think I'll be able to do that. Um, if we do this is 1.6. All right, and then we can go here. I'm just going to go to right there for now. Now we'll set the distance of this. In a minute, and then I have to do this line is here, and that's supposed to be one point six. That's not right. So if the distance from here to here should be 1.6. Why is it degrees? Why are you trying to do degrees here? So this line to this line, 1.15. That's not right. All 
I didn't think about doing the. Um, I didn't think an SVG would work because it has the watermarks in it. And I'm trying to just pull it off, but I could try an SVG converter. So let's do. Let's see, did not think of that. Let's see if it works. Because again, the way that there's a lot of extra stuff in here, I don't know if it'll work. That work. All right. So let's do insert SVG. Um, download button first. Oh, it did kind of work. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this real quick. Though. Let's delete this and delete this. So we're going to uh, insert SVG. Because I've just gotten so used to tracing out a lot of these. It just made it easier. Man, there that is. Just delete a bunch of this stuff here. That worked out quite well. But that is just a lot of extrudes. So let's see if we can do a as Ryan said, we can try it out. Let's do a get a Pennsylvania outline here. SVG format. That's a GIF. I don't want GIF. Save as. Why is it doing a GIF? That's not a good picture. Uh, let's see where we at here. Stock and Domi images. That might work. See if that works, and then we'll convert it real quick. Convert more files. Choose. Oh, that did not work out at all. Not at all. No, that didn't work at all. Yeah, it is GIF. GIF is peanut butter. Just want a simple outline of the state. That why is it so freaking hard? <laughs> something to be simple and not like some crazy image or something. I just want something simple. Save image. Okay, there's a PNG right there. Let's do PNG to SVG. Choose a file, that one right there. Convert.
Because I also did think about just doing a um, doing an offset of some of these lines here on this sketch, which it's not. What's thinking about it? So I thought about doing an offset of this up, just so that the top of the the actual picture would kind of follow this line along, but I didn't do that. Cancel that. Because you're taking too long. Skippy's peanut butter. <laughs> Great value peanut butter. <laughs> Oh, because he says slick 3R. Yeah, that is pretty annoying. Not going to lie. Uh, insert SVG. Over there. And we need to go here and scale it way up. And when you scale it up, it looks like... Trash. If I like that or not. Like three R, like he's a pirate R. <laughs> oh, let me hide that other sketch. Sketches. There we go. Yeah, so if we extrude just this here good gravy that's going to be that's going to be tough because then we have to go in between all of these guys here this is going to take a minute We're going to do that and that. That'll make it easier. Well, technically, I need to do all of it, don't I? Yes, I do. Oh, Dad's here. Hey. This is chunky. This is, finish that sketch. So we extrude all of that, and it's gonna take a minute for it to think about it, because it is so low. And then we don't want that outer one. So we're gonna go negative three on this, and hit okay. So we're just having this be the, this is just the base. I'm gonna have to turn the sketch back on once this finishes, cause this is gonna take a minute. There we go, okay. So we'll turn the sketch back on. There's our sketch. So we're gonna extrude again, and we're gonna go ahead and extrude the outline. Now we have to go in and get some of these details that are not connected, they're independent. Now my hope is that these details are large enough that they'll be easy enough to 3D print, but we won't really know until I throw this in the slicer and see what it looks like. That fell. Do 
do click 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 try not to click the wrong thing here all right is that oh no we got to do these ones here too I was thinking about colors. I was thinking about just doing black and white, but I could do black and yellow, do Pittsburgh colors, black, black background with a nice yellow on the front or some type of gold. Right, black and gold is the colors. So we're going to do this up three millimeters. And this is going to be a join operation. Oh, I missed that and that. Hit OK on there. All right, so now we have that. We can turn the sketch off. So that's where we're sitting at right now. So now we're going to go ahead and do appearance. So we want to be able to see what this looks like. So let's do, we're going to do black. We're going to do a matte black. We're going to do it to the body. I want the whole thing first to be like that. Then I'm going to go back and see if we get a, I would just do this uh, matte yellow. We're going to go to faces and I should be able to just, uh, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do the whole thing. I want to do the whole thing matte yellow. And then we'll go black with faces and we're just going to do the background there. And we'll just have to go in and do these different parts. Um, so this is where it comes into when you start to like when you want to render this out to show somebody or show something this is kind of where a lot of the time between part comes in because I also do like to add renders when I upload things because I don't always take pictures of the stuff I make I am horrible at remembering to do that But this will also just make it all look so much better. Do -do 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 -do. Come on, there we go. Make sure we get straight in. These ones are a little tough to get to in here. They also don't matter as much because, yeah, you're not going to see that even in a render. But if I'm going to do the work, I might as well do it. That's already looking pretty good. Gunner is aggressive, so... This also really helps. So if you're doing a uh, multicolored prints using like a, a palette or you're going to use the uh, the multi-material unit two from Prusa, the MMU two or two S or even MMU one, if you're still rocking that, uh, this really helps you visualize as well what your model is going to look like when you do multicolored prints. I did it for, uh, I did multicolored prints in all of the, the printer build so far and I embedded their names into them and I did the logo work I went through and I did this so that I could see 
before I even put it into canvas or you, whatever slicer you're using, I use, I use canvas for the palette. And then I already know kind of what I need to worry about when I'm coloring the model. Uh, I did the same thing to Bumblebee when I just created that. So kind of like that. I think it needs to go a little bit lower though. What do you think? I, think, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it now since I'm already so far. What is that? Uh, let's sketch. See if this works or not. I don't know if it'll work. We do a move. Man, this is chugging. It's a lot of little points in there for this to kind of work on. What are we sitting at? I'm not pegging the CPU, but man, it is taking its good old time, isn't it? Oh, geez. That's not even moving. <laughs> it's thinking about it so hardcore. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we're chugging here. Man, come on. Fusion. Yeah, we're not even pegging out here. My disk usage is 1% on my NVMe drive for this. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait a minute. I'm just trying to, I want to move it down just like, I don't know, two mil maybe, three mil. Actually, maybe like five because this is 200 mil. Uh, I mean, this is a bigger print. It's not huge, but definitely a bigger print. It's gonna take up majority of a, of a thing. I'll probably end up trying to print this on the, I'll probably try to print this on, I think Megatron or on um, Ultra Magnus as a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. My only concern is the extrusion width. That's not going to be, it's going to be too wide with a 0.5 nozzle on these letters. <laughs> yeah, one fusion does something. Uh, I mean, it's 1,461 uh, selection points selected. So, yeah, I'm moving quite a bit of things at once. Well, Fusion is powerful. It definitely has its... Uh, can, we, can, we, can I just do one? Okay, it came back, but it didn't move. So let's hit one millimeter down and see if we just go down just a smidge here. Come on. Wake me up when Fusion Go goes. Well. Come on, Fusion. You can do it. You can do it. Totally froze up again. I was laughing, Aaron. I watched, because I was watching you do the last part of the ITX build. Uh, and yeah, I mean, even you had Fusion freezing up on you. I mean, this is 32 gigs of RAM in here. And Fusion's only taken up a little bit. Uh, let's see what Fusion's doing right now. 
So fusion is fusion's only using a gig. So that's just annoying. One thing I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and turn off. Uh, come on, where are you at here? Exit that. Amazon Photos was backing up, but still, I'm only using a gig of RAM for this, and it's using twelve percent of the CPU. So yeah, I mean, if you guys are looking to do Fusion stuff, it can take some time sometimes and literally we're just trying to move this down just a smidge i should have imported these as separate sketches that was my fault uh but i have both the pittsburgh the pennsylvania background and this as the same sketch so actually i'm going about this all wrong why am i trying to move all of that oh now you're going to work if we go five ten no it's not doing anything okay let's just Exit that. So I don't know why I didn't just move this. That's not let me do it. Okay. Well, network usage, I don't think at all. Uh, performance, Ethernet. Um, we peaked at about 8 megs. But right now, not doing anything. 2.6 megs. Let's see if I try to do this again. Yeah, I mean, it peaks around 5 megs, I guess, on there. Yeah, so not too much. Yeah, sometimes the cloud bit of it, I do wish. Yeah, I could always just re-import that SVG. Insert SVG. Let's grab it again and we'll just turn it around. And we'll scale it up and we'll put it where we want it to be again. Oh, that got real big real fast. All right, right there. So I want to go up just a little bit like that, I think. I think that's going to be better. So we're going to delete the lower one. Yeah, I like that better. And then if we finish the sketch, uh, it's going to think about it for a minute. And probably going to break my extrudes. Yeah, broke my extrudes. That's okay. So let's click on this here. And all of it. And this is, you know, probably over 1500 objects to select at once. So, yay. Okay. It's my thinking tongue, Ryan. It's my thinking tongue, man. You watch yourself. Yeah, I'm just a little worried that the... It's going to end up being too... Uh, so we'll call this just... Pittsburgh sign. Let's go ahead and wait for that to save. We're going to throw this into uh, Prusa Slicer here. Once it saves. There it goes. V1. Saves STL. Yep. And I'm going to just save it to the desktop is fine. And Prusa Slicer. Let's see. Desktop. Pittsburgh sign. So that's actually, uh, that's a little bit bigger than I was kind of hoping it was going to be. That's quite a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. So we're just going to scale.
scale us down to 98%, 90, 92% fits on there. And then let's just slice it and see what happens here. A yellow border, yeah, that might be a good idea. I kind of just want to see if I'm really worried about the text, to be honest. Uh, oh, I know. I don't want to do it on here. Hang on. I want to slice it on Ultra Magnus. Because Ultra Magnus has a smaller nozzle. Oh, I'm trying to change things while it's slicing. There we go. So we are going to have to uh, scale it down more, though. 85%. 80%. Okay, like that. Look at that sweet graphic that Aaron made for Ultra Magnus's bed picture. Love it. Um, slice this now. Look like it'll do it. Some of these little bits in here might be a little bit hard for it to do, but potentially... Looks like it'll be able to get it done. It is really thin, though. So I was kind of thinking of is to, if I can scale this whole thing down. Because I think if I scale it down and then scale it up, that extrusion should be bigger technically. So it's just, it's really thin. I just want it to be a little bolder. It's just a theory. I don't know if it actually work or not. Or I might be doing push slicer. So if we make this, uh, let's just do 40% scale. And then we're going to file, we're going to export the plate as STL. And then we're going to delete that out. And if we pull it back in. And then if we scale it up, pretty much as big as we can go. No, that didn't do anything. It was a fool's chance anyways. I mean, the palette would work. It's just, again, with the, with the thin, with how thin this, ex these extrusions are, that's the problem is that they're so thin and creating offsets for all of that would be pretty brutal. So if I do a sketch here and then we're going to project that and then we're going to do an offset of that I'm in we give that a three mil now we do negative three maybe negative two so it's not too big there and then we can extrude this up three millimeters like that that actually does look a little bit better you're right ryan it does look much better there so let's save this Let's 
export this again. No, I don't want to export, sorry. I'm going to save as STL. Like that, like that. And then come back into here. Load that in. We're doing what, 82 fits? Barely. Slice it down. There's our very easy dual color for that. A few of these spots here do worry me, but I feel like it should be able to fill those gaps in. Yeah, I mean, precise are just easy to add a filament swap and done. And I don't have the palette tuned for any of the big printers, which, I mean, it would be cool to do, but it's definitely not tuned for that. Now, so now I can see how, again, it'll fill those in because those gaps, you won't see that. But I do wonder what it's going to look like under the BLV with a 0.6 million nozzle. Let's slice it like this again and see what that looks like. I'm just curious to see how those extrusions are going to look on the details. And it looks like it will fill it in better. There's a lot less gaps in here. But we lo we're losing some of the details here on the bridges there. We lose those details. And these are not all consistent either. They're not consistent on their size. So overall, worse. Now, out of curiosity, this won't fit on Megatron. This won't fit on any of those. I don't have a large format point formula nozzle in Brucia Slicer. Because I have the, I mean, the FT5 is large format, but uh, it's not in Brucia Slicer. I use Simplify 3D for that guy. We'll just go back to Ultra Magnus then. And yeah, finding the right color is also going to be a little bit of a challenge for me. Slice. Slice, please. There we go. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Definitely have to make that top. That's five hours. Interesting how it doesn't split it up for the different colors. I wonder if I need to do the T0 for the M600 on the tool change. I'll let me do it though. So color change. Because sometimes you have to do T0. I have to do that on, it was Megatron to make that work. But still tell me it's the one color. This makes me think that it's not going to want to change it. But it is there, M600 T0 now. That's not half bad, I think. I think that'll be all right. Something to add to our Pittsburgh wall. Oh, that is how that is there. Again, only being a five hour print, it's not bad at all. Because it's only six mil high. And the bulk of it is three millimeters that's basically solid. Yeah, that is 
you know, we're doing a 20% infill on that. Uh, Ryan, I don't have any resin. I would love to, to do resin stuff, to be honest. Like, truly, I think doing stuff in resin would be super awesome, but I can't order it. So, oh, it tells you up here. That's the difference. It used to tell you down here. Now it tells you up here. So, the print total is five hours and 39 minutes. Color change is an hour and 12. An hour and 12. Oh, it's four hours, 27 minutes for the base and then an hour and 12 minutes for the top. I'm tracking it now. Okay. So that is the nice thing. This, this the way to do color change in uh, Prue Slicer is way better than doing it in Simplify 3D because you can actually see where your color changes are at. Put it in a frame. Nah, it's too thick for a frame. It's six millimeters thick. No, just having this on the wall would be all right. Because we do have... So my wife got a record. And it has the city skyline um, cut into this record. And it looks really cool. Except we dropped it. And there's a, a, a hole in the one part of it now. Or there's a little chip out of the bottom. So I was kind of upset about that. And the nice thing about at least 3D printing this. If this breaks when we move... I can just reprint it. Like, it's not a big deal. But I do need to figure out what yellow or if I use gold on this. But my gold is like gold gold. It's not like that. That's Steeler gold. It's the yellow. So I do have that yellow PETG that's not too bad. Gunner, I like Prue Slicer for several things that are better than Simplify 3D. I still use it heavily with a lot of my printers. I'm getting more away from it. I mean, look, look at me printers I have in here now. I have all these printers in here now. I'm trying to use this more than Simplify 3D. The problem is I keep going back to it when something is not working out properly. I end up going back and doing it in there because it ends up working better that way. Um, so where are we at here? So I can show you guys here some of the other things that I had made in a fairly similar fashion. Um, so I did, I made, uh, these last year for my kids teachers. Um, I found these signs online, which are pretty cool. And I just grabbed the Harry Potter font off of free fonts and made them these little name tags to put on their desk. Um, so these came out really nice. And I had, I actually used, I had some really good, what did I, use? I think I used protopasta for the red. I had their, oh yeah, I still had some cherry red protopasta. And then I used a uh, AO Robotics gold for the lettering. And they looked really good. And they were both, Heard both their teachers were Gryffindors, so I made those for them. Um, what else did I make in here? Oh, basically same thing with uh, tracing something and, Im and importing it. Come on, open up. So we had we got this game, this Disney Song Challenge game, and it didn't come with a uh, a, it comes with this wheel and the deck of cards, but nothing to put the cards in. So I found online this um, this case, and then I just scanned in the the card, which you can't see. Let me turn off the body. Oh, you can't see anymore. I don't have it there anymore. But I just scanned in the card. 
and then scaled it up onto here, downloaded some Disney font, and created this little case that now matches the game. So that worked out really well. I don't want to save changes there. I made the Nerf logo. Where'd the Nerf logo go? Oh, I did this for a friend. Uh, a bathroom sign, Pirate and Mermaid. Again, just found the picture. I did an SVG of this one, uh, which was super simple to do. And then just extruded it back. Three millimeters thing is what it is. Oh, four mil. And then this one is uh, what's that? three mil. So I was able to make a pretty funny bathroom sign for someone. So doing that, oh, I did the same thing here on my sign. So I 3D printed my logo and just a quick sign here when I did a, uh, we did like a little maker fair last year. Or actually it was, what was that? 29, it was 2019. It was crisp. It was December, 2019 when we did a little maker fair here and I was showing off 3D printing. So I went ahead and created this. This is before I had the palette. So you can see how it's uh, stair stepped and I just did color changes, uh, did the black, white, then black, then blue. And that worked out well. Uh, but yeah, I've done a ton of different things. Oh, this is the, I made this, this is made for multi-material. But I designed and created this for the multi-material. So I, these all fit PTFE fittings, one on each side. And this clips onto the these wire racks that I have here for all my printers. It clips into the bottom of there. And... I'm able to, I was able to run all of the PTFE tubes through this and they were all labeled. So I knew which one I was feeding into. It's kind of the most confusing thing with the, with the MMU2S is which tube you're feeding into to know which extruder number to call it in the slicer. But yeah, I've done a bunch of different projects like this. Uh, oh, I started doing Gladys. That was tough. I uh, started doing Demo Ranch logo. I did do a demo ranch logo. I think I started a different one up here, but yeah. So I did the demo ranch logo. Oh, that was just a picture of it. Um, oh, here's the Nerf sign that I made. Except all of the bodies aren't there. This is. Uh, oh yeah, that is complete. Is this complete? Oh, it is. It's just not colored right. Faces. Oh, where's that uh, matte black? Oh, right there. Yeah, there it is. And then we should have red down there. Yeah, so when I made the Nerf logo as uh, multi, uh, turn off the sketch. There we go. Except that's like, why is that like see-through? I don't know why the transparency on this is so bad right now. But yeah, made a Nerf logo. That worked out well. Um, I think this is supposed to be yellow too. No cancel that but yeah that was in the same way as well when i created this this is that down there but i have that on my nerf wall upstairs where everything's mounted and here you can see the picture when i rendered it out come on i guess you can't open it like that um but yeah, so I've done lots of different things this way. This I fully traced. I did not, I did this a long time ago. I did not do the SVG uh, with this. I don't know why I didn't do that, but I didn't. Um, this is really bugging me now that the colors are off on this. There it is. That's how it's supposed to be like that. Um... But yeah, I tried to play in Fusion as much as possible. 
Uh, when I made the baby gate, there's the files for that. Uh, these were the, I don't, I don't think I actually did a video on these, but these were the kitchen drawers that I had made for our kitchen. I'll probably end up reusing these when we move because I won't take those prints with me, but I will reuse the files and just scale them with the parametric designs. Um, gunner Nerf guns are the best, man. They're so much fun. Um, they really are. They just... Uh, I have pegboard upstairs. I've shared pictures before. I don't know if I've ever showed in the Discord, but I shared uh, pictures of the pegboard, and then this Nerf sign is right in the middle, and then all the guns are mounted on there using these pegboard mounts right here. So these are Nerf gun pegboards that I made to be specific sizes. So this was actually a um, uh, this was a customizer model in. Um, and what's call it in, uh, Thingiverse on Thingiverse, I should say. And I was able to get the sizes roughly where I wanted. And then I brought them into fusion just to edit them a little bit because I wanted some more support on them, but I ended up doing, um, to doing that. And then I made some more custom ones, uh, up here for the bigger guns that are mounted directly to the wall. Yeah, right here. So this is a 70 millimeter and a 90 millimeter. So these are made for the really big ones that are mounted up. Um, I'll put I'll put pictures in the Discord for you guys. If you guys want to check that out, there's a link down below for Discord. I'll post in there so you guys can see it. Um, but I have no way to take my camera up there right now. But uh, yeah, so it's it worked out pretty well. I needed to mount. There's two other guns that I was supposed to mount. The wife was yelling me about and I didn't do it. So oh well right now. Uh, but I also made shelf brackets somewhere in here. I think I made them myself. I don't think I printed those. Um, or I don't think I downloaded those. I thought I made my own shelf brackets. But I'm not seeing it in here. Um, spice drawer things for the wife. I make stuff for her all the time. So what I'm doing for her right now is a little more artsy than what I normally do. I do a lot of functional printing for her. Uh, this is play kitchen drawers. So we have a, what are the kid, kid something, what's it called? Uh, anyways, we've got a play kitchen and there's no like drawers for like all the fake food and stuff. So I printed a couple of drawers out of some wood filament I had laying around for those. Um, these are all the parts for the, um, the tube fort video that I made when I designed all of those pieces for it. Uh, made some 3D printed. Uh, peeps for the kids for Easter. They like that. Which I have made so many different things on here now. And I'm looking at them like, geez Louise. I do need to try and um, clean some of those up. Oh, yeah, here's the smart board uh, frame that I made. That was a lot of fun. Let's save that. I cloned the Lego Duplo gas can because I wanted to 3D print a bigger one for my son to have. Uh, with spice containers here, Nerf magazine holder. That also clips into the, the pegboard. So I did want to... Some of them are powerful enough. I'd see, so you want to go, what, 20 feet? Um, some of them can. I've been wanting to mod some of mine, but the kids are too small. And if you mod them, it, you basically put in a a stronger spring into them, and they hurt. Like they can they can really move at that point. Well, I didn't design the crows. So that's I printed the crows, but I did not design those. Uh, these under desk basket holders. I didn't do a video on that. Again, it's another. I've done a lot of projects. I never did any videos on them, but these under desk baskets hold. Uh, I don't know. I got these plastic baskets uh, at the hardware store here and I created these so that I can just and they're just enough clearance that they mount to the turn that off. So this part here mounts to the actual desk and then the the drawer slides over this part right here and I have one on each side and one on the back. You could for some of the bigger ones that I do four one. Yeah, I did four for the bigger ones. The smaller ones just have 
one he one on each side and then one at the back and it just slides all the way in. But the bigger drawers have four, five on them. And that was, again, just because I have this big board as my desk and that gives me a little bit of storage space uh, for that. Makeup shelf and a wider makeup shelf for stuff under her mirror. I have not made Ivan's Nerf gun. Uh, that is way too big and the electronics in that. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I can design, you know, amateurly. I'm not even saying I'm anywhere near his level of design, obviously. But uh, I definitely have wanted to do stuff like that. And just, I, I can't do the electronics. That's a little too much for me. To try and figure out. Oh, now we're going into way older stuff here. Yeah, so done a lot of different things in Fusion, and I just do it to practice, you know. And I, I highly recommend anybody else that's trying to learn how to design stuff, open up Fusion and start learning. You know, it's free, which is great. Um, and if you're just doing oddball projects that you just kind of want to learn then I, I think absolutely everybody should get right into it and start learning. Hey, Viking, how you doing? So, yeah, that um, I think that's... I think we're going to give that print a shot and we'll see how it ends up turning out. I did finally get the... The BLV working, so I've been doing a couple test prints on it. Uh, this is with the layer up copper, silk copper filament, which has a super nice shine to it. Um, it came out well, surprisingly enough, uh, because with the... Oh, you can do it, Ryan. So, actually, Ryan, for you, when I was digging through my stuff, I found... I think last year, whenever I was, I ordered something from uh, AliExpress, they threw in a 3D touch, so a knockoff BL touch. And I found it last night, and I stayed up way too late, or two nights ago. Yeah, two nights ago. Stayed up way too late, and I installed it, and it actually works. So Ryan is sending me a BL touch version 3.1, which is the plastic. Um, tipped one that is going to go on there because i don't want to keep this knockoff one on there i don't know how well it's going to last it feels cheap the wiring is really 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 tiny on it but it does work i wanted to kind of have proof of concept that it was going to work and um but yeah so it does print i printed this and i printed a volron cube uh, i can show you guys up close on this one here <laughs> Go to here. Yeah, there we go. Zoom this in. There it is there. So ended up coming out pretty well. It's silk filament. You can see all the different uh, goofiness with it. But there's just in here, there's a little bit of an oddity. But uh, aside from that, it uh, turned out pretty good. The top was a little rough. Not 100% sure why that happened, but it was. Bottom was good, though. But yeah, it does look pretty good. This was printed really fast with PLA settings. Uh, but the cooling issue is gone with the dual 5015 fans. So they cooled way, way better than that single one did. So I'm glad to have the, uh, the kind of issue of cooling being now solved. Am I going to Dan's stream? I don't know. Maybe I'll pop in. Uh, we'll kind of see. I want to get this printing, but I have to... Ultra Magnus is right now in the hallway because I have no place for him. And that's kind of uh, something I need to solve here real soon. I need to get this JG Aurora finished and moved. I might put the JG Aurora up top, uh, up here, so that Ultra Magnus will fit there and only on that shelf where the old where the TiVo right here where the TiVo Tornado used to be. 
so I need to get all that stuff moved around. I need to get printing with that machine again. Uh, I've been saying that for a couple of days now, and I've just not been motivated to continue the prints on it. And I need to start the video on the ANET ET4. I have all the prints done, but I need to do that one. And I want to do, I don't know, maybe one or two more prints with the the uh, Homer's Odysseus before I do a video on that. Dan usually comes in here, Gunner. He's in the Discord every now and then. He pops in. He's not in there too often, though. Um, no, I don't want to save that. Did you guys see the 3D printable Bernie Sanders? Oh, my God. I cannot wait to print that. I showed it to my wife. She got real excited there. But, yeah, I cannot wait to do that. Oh, I was going to show you guys here a couple of the other um, designs I was looking at. I settled on that one. I thought about seeing what everyone thought, but that was the one that I uh, settled on. And I found this cool website. Where am I at here? Stream here. Okay. So this is called Deposit Photos. And you can search pretty much anything. And you get a whole ton of stuff that comes up. Uh, so I just did like Pittsburgh and kind of got these photos that I, this is the one I end up using to kind of design off of, uh, which is this one here. So, but I found some other cool ones here. This one seemed pretty fun as it was a little more, uh, it's, it's a broader line, but a lot less detail in the print. Uh, so I thought about trying to do some type of how I would outline that. I wasn't really 100% sure. Uh, but they even have other other cities in here, Kentucky State, Texas. Um, here's another here's another Pennsylvania one. Uh, but this is uh, Penn State. Uh, so there's a lot of different ones there. And then I did this one was also kind of cool. I thought this one might be a little bit better as a um, kind of rounded bottom to it. And then have the outline up top be offset by, I don't know, 10 or 15 millimeters like that. I thought that would be kind of cool to do. Uh, and then this one, I really thought hard about this one because why are these buttons not working? Uh, anyways, can I zoom in like this? I can't like that. Um, so I did think about this one because it would be kind of fun to have it be layered, but I, the work it would be uh, a lot. So I decided not to uh, do that, but. You have all the different iconic buildings. You've got some of the bridges here. Uh, this is the point in the middle. But yeah, I thought maybe having this as multi-layer would be cool, but I ended up going against it because the work would just be uh, insane to make that one work. Yeah, Dan's 42 today. Aaron, I didn't realize you were 41 already. But yeah, I think it's kind of that. So, but yeah, this is a very cool site to be able to search things up, uh, kind of get some ideas for some of the designs. Uh, there's one just a Pittsburgh landmarks, which is kind of cool. Um, cathedral and some of the other buildings, some of the bridges go away. Um, but yeah, again, if you have other cities in here to do, if there's a particular building, Philly, Ryan's going to be old and he turned 40. Well, Aaron, you're nine years older than I am, so hope that makes you feel better. <laughs> and I thought, I, I've seen a bunch of the, the newer things coming out about the color lithophanes, and I keep thinking back to this picture. Um, come on, go back. Should go into there. So um, I don't want to save the image. I want to open it up. So this is actually, it says stock image, but I know the guy that took this photo. Uh, we've actually bought things off of him. And I think doing this as a lithophane might be cool because what you do is you print the photo out, do the lithophane, and then uh, you just put this on the back of it with a bright light. And that's pretty cool. I like that. But I think doing some of these uh, things like a lithophane would be pretty cool. Like this is pretty boss right here. But I don't know how that would look in a lithophane. 
with all those colors. You'd have to have your lighting pretty, uh, pretty set, I think. But Dave DiCello does a lot of these photos here. I didn't know that he did them on stock sites. This is definitely one of his photos right here. <laughs> then you can do vectors only. That's cool. I didn't see you can do that. Say is your wife. Well, my wife's younger than me, so. <laughs> Brandon, I didn't realize you were younger than me. Although, I think I remember you saying that you didn't have a camera and microphone, and yet you did a live stream yesterday playing a game. So I, I gotta kind of call your bluff. Well, that was fun. Oh, there's a new version of Fusion 360. Restart Fusion. I could have swore you said you didn't. I'm like 90% sure you said that. I'm going to go back and like search all of the Discord and see if I can find it. Although Brandon's probably looking right now and deleting it. Dude, you guys talk a lot in Discord. It's like forever for me to just... Aaron, did you decide on what uh, processor you're getting for your build? So you guys are just absolutely killing the random on Discord right now. Well, I guess I've never seen you on his streams. All right, we're on the latest version of Fusion. Awesome. Oh, you're going to 3700X. Okay. I am holding out for Ryzen 5000 series uh, just because there's no, there's no reason for me to buy something older. But again, the only way I found it to get it is to order from a pre-built company. So Origin or Cyber, um, was it Cyber, whatever they are. Anyways, that's the only way that I found to do it. But it's going to cost an extra, I think like $400 to buy it from them rather than part it out myself. And, but again, I can't even get the CPU or graphics card because I want to put a 38 in it or a 6700X. T in it or 6800 whatever the new one is um 3090 just cost too much money so and i want this to be this is for the new vr rig because i'm selling mine here and i'm just going to buy a small itx build um the yeah just a small itx tower 3080 in it uh, I think it's all water cooled as well. It's like three grand, or like twenty eight hundred. I think got it down to. Well, again, Ryan, you can get them. 
you just can't buy the, the processor itself. You can get it in a pre-built and buying a pre-built goes against everything in me because I mean, I build my own rigs. Like I don't, I don't need someone to build it for me, but just because of availability, it kind of makes it like you need to. Well, the Vegas are good for VR. Um, my my 2080 is decent for it, but I could definitely get a huge performance boost by selling the 2080 for like a grand and buying the pre-built with a 3080 in it. And I'm just hoping that by the time I go to buy it, because I'll probably buy it in August or September, probably August. So it gets there you know, a little bit after I do. Uh, I'm hoping the price will go down a little bit by then. Well, Ryan, again, it's the only way you can get the parts. I can't get a 3080 or a Ryzen 5000 series to just buy it. And I'm not also not willing to wait a year. I mean, I still have my custom build. I'm still rocking this guy here. So, which does everything I need to do for editing, but I've also debated on putting a water block on the 2080 and putting that in here and selling, this is a 1080 uh, Founders Edition in here with a 9700K and 32 gigs of RAM. So the only thing really holding this back is the, the graphics card, but I don't game as much as I used to. So I might end up go play on the quest, get the get Ultra Magnus out and printing this thing. I might go play on the quest too for a little bit tonight. Haven't done that in a while. The kids have been playing it so much. They're just loving it. Yes. Uh, the tw I have the Gigabyte Gaming OC. Uh, actually, Gigabyte sent it to me because I bought a 1080 Ti Gigabyte OC Gaming, and it died after I had it for maybe a year, and it totally died on me. And Gigabyte, honestly, they have the best customer service out there because also their hard warranty is good for to transfer because I bought it used. And it died after I had it for about a year. And they're like, well, we don't have that anymore. So how about we just upgrade it for a 2080? And I was like, sure. And I got a huge performance boost in that. Hey, Jim, how you doing? So it's not, it's not that it's slowing me down, Jeff. It's just that I know I can get a little bit better. But also, I'm, also the motherboard and processor, it's a 2600K with 24 gigs of RAM because I have mismatched dual channel because it's what I have a DDR3 and I'll just get a bigger performance boost out of everything by go ahead to um, upgrading that. I was wondering, Brandon, I'm waiting to see you start printing again. I think I've printed more on Ultra Magnus than you have yet. So that that's kind of also, you finished a good month or two before I did. More room for printers. Awesome. So you're going to get a Volron going down there. To do to do what we got here. And after seeing the price of some of those Volron kits, man, I'm just like, ooh, 
Those are quite tempting. <laughs> oh, Ryan. Stoking the fire, buddy. I see you. Stoking the fire. Yeah, I think you should I think you should get away from pre-built, man. Start doing it more DIYs. That's definitely I'm having so much more fun. I will say working on the DIYs than trying to mod the pre-builts that I get for reviews. Definitely way more fun. It's not that I can't do it because I've done it before. I mean I've modded many of them. But the the DIYs are a lot more fun. I didn't think it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a huge pain. But after doing, after working on that power week with with uh, Aaron and designing Megatron, that kind of set me off right there. It really did. I have I have my green bear kit still sitting here, and I don't think I'm going to build it. Um, I'm not going to have time to build it here, I don't think. I'd like to, but I'm not going to have time to do it. I'm kind of debating on getting all the stuff together and shipping it ahead of myself and building it when I get there. Because I have, well, now that I took the SKR out, I have an extra SKR, and I can do another SKR bear in it. Or if I end up... LDO said they would send me motors. Could have LDO send me motors and then use the Enzy board that I have laying around too. So. Yeah, I am debating, but I got to just figure because I need to print the parts and I need to make sure I have everything to put together to send ahead. That's the other thing for it. Um, so I'm not quite decided on what I want to do with that yet. Hey, Llama. So yeah, it's definitely, again, it's definitely something that's on my mind, and I'm just trying to figure out what would end up being the best use of my time for it and things like that. I do want to get Optimus built soon, but now that I have to just get everything moved around here, and the BLV is almost done, definitely close to getting that finished. Uh, I did order again, hopefully the proper sized um, buttons for it, or switches, buttons, I guess button switches, so that I can finish the LEDs on it. I'll put on the new, the true BL Touch once I get that from Ryan, and we'll get the 3D Touch off, and uh, I think that's really it to do for that. Oh, I do need to edit that. Let me do that real quick, actually, while I'm sitting here. I need to... Where is it at? So I'll show you guys. I'll do one more edit here because I have to work on something. Uh, so go to the BLV. And here it is right here. I made an edit to this, but I didn't make it enough. So I need to fix that. So the issue here is the I re redesigned this to not have the holes in it. I said this before, and I did it to be for a volcano nozzle. So the original was only made for a standard V6. And since it doesn't have my history in it, this is going to be annoying, but I have to undo all of this. Um which is super much a pain here. 
to take all of these fillets off. Son of a gun, I pressed the wrong button. I pressed the Windows key instead of Control. So I am going to turn the history on after this. But when I imported this model, it didn't have the history on. So all the changes that I did are not in the timeline. I will say that is super annoying. All right, so let's delete all of those. And then I need to turn the timeline on. Aaron, remind me how to do that. You remember how to turn the timeline on in this design. Um, should be under general. Where is it? Capture. Design. Capture design history. Okay, it's enabled, but where's the timeline at? Right click and it's just not. Unless my right click is broken on this mouse now. No, it works everywhere else. Let's just save it real quick. There it is. And then. Capture design history. There it is. Okay. Oh, why did that move? Why did you move? There we go. There we go. Now we can see everything. Uh, so, yeah, so this I need to extrude this down 2.2 mil let me go up into here and we're going to extrude this negative 2.2 now we're going to extrude this a negative 2.2 like that and then we'll add the fillets back on all of this It was just a one mil fillet. Yep. And enter. Okay. So now I can go back and change it if I need to. But yeah, my original design when I did this, uh, it was a little too high. So right now I have a M3 nut. These are made for M2.5 uh, captive nuts here. So I'm just using an M3 as a spacer basically to lower it down that extra two millimeters. Uh, and that worked out uh, just fine. And I did want to check what's the diameter of delete that face and delete that face down. Diameter is only two millimeters. So I kind of want to make this a little bit bigger because it was a really hard to screw in the uh, the M3s into that. Well, it doesn't need to be adjustable, Aaron, because it's a, I guess technically you could. I didn't design this. This is a model I found online and I'm just modifying it. Uh, the original I found on Thingiverse right here. So this is the original that I found on Thingiverse and I just modified this to, again, this was made for a standard V6 and I'm making it work for a volcano. So I just basically stretched it out and pulled this down by seven millimeters. And that like, that was, that was spot on. Um, 
But this is definitely makes it a little bit closer to what it needs to be. Because the BL touches, even the knockoffs, they're all the exact same height. So that's that's not really a problem there. But this is specifically designed for Volcano. Now, I don't know if a Mosquito Magnum is not going to be, well, it's not going to be this long. Or a Dragon is also not going to be this long. But again, this was specifically made for a V6 uh, Volcano. I'm not a terribly huge fan of the design. But it kind of is what it is. What are you doing here? Oh yeah, I forgot this part here. Make that two. Let's make that just a little get a little bit more extra meat on that. Uh, because a fan fits in here, which kind of also have to have space for that. But since I lowered it, it's not as big. Which actually, instead of doing that, I'm going to make this arm here a little bit. Come on, what are you doing? Just going to make that a little bit beefier in there. That's one mil, and then we're going to go two mil on that. That's a little better. No more contact on that. But yeah, so far I'm liking it. It's a little different. Also because the fans sit a little bit of an angle when they're in there. Uh, but it does work. So I can save this now out. And yeah. That was, I think it was the last design thing I needed to do. I think that was it. Because I did debate putting a mag, the Mosquito Magnum on it, but uh, I'm not I'm decided against it. Um, hey, here's Moses. How you doing? Just doing a little designing tonight. Nothing too fancy. I can reprint that if I want, but I don't really have to because what's on there, again, with the spacers works fine, but I do want to share the file, um, which I, I do need to spend. I did post on Prusa Printers. Is it back up, by the way? I saw that it was down earlier today. Let's see if it comes up or not. Oh, yeah, it's up now. Uh, but I did go ahead and uh, post my remixes for the Prusa Mini FISEC. So the back plate and the USB thing that I made, um, I went ahead and posted those on there. But I definitely want to do, um, oh, this looks cool. I definitely want to do some more posting on there and get other things put up. I just have not made time to do it because it's a whole evening to export everything and uh and whatnot it just takes a lot of time oh llama's geary guy is here on prusa printers <laughs> it just went up there a little bit it seems it looks kind of like uh very inspired by wilson from the marble machine i don't know if you're still here llama or not But for uh, the Winter Garden Marble Machine X, Wilson is the little guy he made. And it uh, looks very similar to that. But I do want to get some more of my stuff put up. I still cannot get, again, I don't know if anybody else is having this problem, but I cannot get my Thingiverse profile to import into Prusa printers. I don't know why. So, see you later, Aaron. So one thing that's kind of driving me a little bit crazy is I want to get my other models imported over here. It's just not working at all, though. Let's 
I'm going to try it again right now just because it's such a pain. Here, profile. Um, how do we do this here? Oh, great. Thingiverse import. Copy link. Open Thingiverse in new window. I'm signed in. Verify Prusa Thingiverse connection. Verification failed. What the heck? Should tweet at them and see what's up with that. Because that is such a pain. Do that right now. There, posted that. See if somebody can see if they can help me out with that issue because that's so annoying. I really want it to work. See you, Ryan. But yeah, I'm going to finish up here now. Uh, that was, I did what I wanted to do tonight was get that designed. End up taking a lot less than I thought it would by making an SVG. So that worked out really well. Uh, I did, Moses. I'll show you that real quick here before I finish signing off. So here is the, um, here it is in Fusion, and then I pulled it into uh, Proust Slicer. I'm going to print this on Ultra Magnus, my 300 by 300 printer, and uh, I think it'll turn out pretty good. But the color looks good. I'm going to do some renders of it here. Uh, surely I can't do it on stream because rendering just totally kills the system. Uh, I should probably do it like that so you can actually see it, not on my face. But yeah, I think it'll end up hopefully looking good, but we'll see. I'll post a picture of it in the uh, Discord once I get it finished and printed out. Uh, I'll probably won't print it today, I'm printing it tomorrow. So, uh, should be all right. Later, Gunner. But yeah, so that's it for me tonight, guys. Thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, helping out with that. Like I said, I'll post pictures in Discord once it's done. If you guys want to hang out in the Discord, there's a link down below. Make sure you guys check that out. And you come hang out with us. We talk about projects, printing, designing, all kinds of things. So you're welcome to come there and hang out with us. If you guys want to support the channel, help me do crazy stuff, check the links down below. Any of the affiliate links or the donation links down there. I appreciate everything. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell icon. You get notifications when I upload content. Approaching 20,000 subscribers soon. Big milestone. So I'm excited for that. So, oh, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for...